we start this video, I quickly wanted to say that today's video is sponsored by Action VFX, and they are currently doing a 50% off Black Friday deal, so definitely check out the link in the description below. In today's video, I will show you how I have created this Paradise Pandora from the movie Avatar. I love movies that portray their imagination of what could be their idea of a different world. Pandora is one of the best examples of an imaginated world that I have seen till this date. And I just wanted to recreate this for a very long time. So with my tight schedule, I was able to create this in two days. Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ines Alea and welcome to my channel where you can learn everything about filmmaking and visual effects. By the way, my previous video was also awesome, or cool, let's say, because I froze to ice and then disintegrated into ice chunks and if you would like to see that, just click through after watching this video, I will link it to you at the end of this video. So I got my footage off artgrid.io. This was the original play that I've worked with and I've turned it into this. I brought that in Cinema 4D, my preferred 3D software to work with, and then I motion tracked it. We don't have that much reference as how far things are apart from each other, so I guessed some measurements and tried to solve my camera because I like to work with real life measurements because these give the most realistic results. I then added a capsule object to my scene. So this simple object is how I started shaping my mountain. So I used deformers to actually shape it into a mountain. I used the taper deformer to make it look like it's tapered downwards. Uh, so it looks like a floating mountain. And then there are displacer effectors on top of that to make it look like a rock. After that, I use the FFD deformer to shape it a little bit more unique. This allows me to warp my object in different ways to make it look a little bit different than just a simple tapered rock. So I've designed the first rock completely, tried to build it uh, pretty modular. So with a few changes in the settings, I should end up with a completely different looking rock. And that's what I wanted so I can at the end spread them all over the place and have different types of rocks with minimal adjustments needed to each of them. For the texturing I love to use Texture Haven, it's a website where you can download free textures in high resolution. I also used HDRI Haven for HDRI environments in high resolutions which is great to match your environment to the shot. So I found a similar looking scenery that looked as my environment and I also added an octane daylight to my scene. I angled both of these suns from the HDRI and the octane daylight coming from the same position as in my footage so it looks that the lighting matches my original footage. Of course, my mountain shouldn't be empty, so I always try to imagine a story behind it. So I started by adding some grass on top of the mountain. For the texturing, I actually worked with weight maps. This allows me to assign different textures to different parts of my model by painting over my model exactly where I want specific things to come. So after the grass, I searched some trees. I would have really enjoyed working with Forrester, but I don't have that plugin, uh, so I searched some trees. Again, using the weight map and the octane scatter effect, I was able to spread these uh, different trees across the landscape. I also painted a bit of the weight on the sides of the mountain, so it looks like vegetation is actually growing all over the mountain, a little bit at random, and it just gives the mountain a little bit more of a natural look. On the bottom of the rocks, I added hanging vines, for example, and you could even have like connecting vines with different mountains and add dynamics on them so they actually move with the wind. These were all things that I would have loved to experiment with, but unfortunately, I didn't have time and I have to uh, check my priorities. So maybe I will play with that uh, sooner or later, probably. After that I was done with one mountain, I simply duplicated it all over my scene and just tried to find a good composition. I manipulated each rock to look different in type and size by playing with these deformers that I used to shape my mountain in the first place. 
Now it's time to bring in some real life. So I searched online for some castle 3D models and I didn't want our typical types of castles because we're in a different world. We're out of this world and a different planet. So maybe they have a different type of architecture. So I found this other type of castle that I really thought matched the shot pretty well. And adding a bridge in between mountains also is like a little bit of fun there, you know, a little bit of life. Anyway, after I was ready for exporting, I set up my multi passes. One that is going to be of big importance here is a Z depth pass. We will use this one later to add in some atmospheric fog in our scene using Adobe After Effects. So I'll see you there. Before we continue, we are going to be using elements from Action VFX in today's video, and they're also today's video sponsor. Action VFX offers high production quality stock assets. They are most known for their explosions that they record in real life using industry standard cameras, and their explosions are being used in movies, series, it's pretty crazy. But they offer a lot more than just that. From fire to destruction to explosions to atmospheric fog and clouds, which could be very useful for today's video. So if you are a creative, don't just think of their name as action. We can also use our tools to make our scenes look magical, spice things up a little bit, adding some mysterious vibes in there, superhero stuff. We can do a lot of cool things. So definitely don't forget to check the link in the description below where you can get 50% just because of Black Friday. So here's your chance. All right, so after my islands were done rendering, I opened them up in Adobe After Effects. I first imported my original footage and then I loaded my multipasses. I adjusted them to my taste, to whatever I like. At the end, I'm only doing some color matching and scene integration here, which is always at the basics of integrating your 3D in your real life footage. I also needed to rotoscope each mountain in the foreground though, as I wanted to place my islands behind them. I also wanted to have some fog in between these two mountains to give it a little bit more depth. So I also did a quick sky replacement here as I wasn't a big fan of the blue sky. I, it didn't look epic enough. And after I'm done compositing my islands, I loaded in my Z depth pass or at least I extracted it from my EXR file, which uh, has all my multi passes inside of it. This is a pretty fun pass to play with and if you want to make your scenes look more mysterious or intense, it allows you to clip anything to a certain depth in your scene. So you literally get control of the entire scene depth, which is great. Now I can play stuff in between the mountains, behind the mountains, and I can just mask objects without masking. So that's pretty cool. So as I have said, we will be using Action VFX assets for this shot as they are, to my knowledge, the best quality out there for these type of things. So I'm going to be downloading some lingering fox, ground fox and their cloud pack. Then in After Effects, I'm going to be using a solid layer and I'm going to pick a color from my scene that could look like a good color for fog. So it could be a kind of bluish grayish kind of tint, uh, something like this I ended up using. And then I'm going to be using my ZDAP pass to show a different opacity of my solid. I actually used a gradient ramp effect and loaded my Z depth pass as a layer to take the information from. Playing with the offset, you can actually see that I'm literally clipping my scene wherever in the depth that I am at. So I can show specific parts of my shot until a specific depth. So that's really great control that I get here. So I place my solid underneath my Z depth pass and I set the layer to luma matte. Now the solid is looking at the Z dot pass and whatever is white, like I said, is going to have a more intense color or full opacity and whatever is black is going to have a lower opacity, hence less color and is going to look like this and it's going to give you that kind of 3D atmosphere effect. So I'm going to be doing this technique over and over again for multiple layers, but this time I'm going to be using atmospheric fog from Action VFX. Don't forget to actually work in 3D layers as we have a moving shot, we will have to retrack the shot in After Effects or export our tracking data from cinema in After Effects and just use the correct depth for the fog and the cloud. So make sure that they are at that distance because we have to think like that. So it's a lot of adjusting, but it will pay off in the results. I especially like to play with this technique around the island with the bridge as they were connected, but because of the Zeta pass, I could now place a cloud in between those two mountains that are connected uh, because one mountain is just a little bit further away. So I can make a cloud pass through that bridge and actually be behind the first uh, island. Anyway, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it's pretty cool, good stuff. 
<laughs> so after that I'm done here, I did a final grade to give it that kind of oomph effect, but yet after that I wasn't completely satisfied with the end result of my shot. So after guessing what was missing, I didn't really like the shot because it didn't have enough life. I know I added a village in there, but there was nothing going on, there was nothing to pay attention to except for the entire overview. So what simple technique could I do to make it more dynamic, as I didn't have much time anymore? Add in a moving object, it's that simple. I found this free sci-fi copter and I imported that in Cinema 4D. I did optimize the model though because it was pretty low poly and I could have improved it by a ton but it wasn't gonna come too close to the camera so it's not really that obvious and again short on time so then I did some rough texturing as it wasn't going to be shown up close to the camera it's totally not a texture for a plane it's actually a concrete texture on it but it looked good so I then animated it to come from behind the camera and fly towards the islands and voila that really does add more life to my scene and shows a bit more depth as well. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my recreation of the Pandora Paradise from Avatar. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. And don't forget to check the link in the description below for Action VFX, great deal on Black Friday. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos. I'll link one up here so you can continue your next level editing journey. Until then, create epic videos.